Good afternoon and welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented to you as always by points bet use the promo code chgo when you sign up and you'll get two risk-free bets up to two thousand dollars i'm greg boyson rolling solo as far as the chgo side today as jay and mario are still enjoying their time off but i have been helped out today by two of our good friends over at our uh sister station as we like to say uh in the all city network we have uh, Lee Amaro and Steve Peters from our great PHNX Coyotes crew. Welcome in, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Um, we see, look at, you know, you, the ratings blockbuster you predicted it. Look at the comments look are already it. blowing up. It's people we're familiar with who watch exactly. our show. Exactly. Like, welcome in. So any of you guys who are, are, are coming over from the PHNX channel, YouTube channel, welcome in. Uh, we kind of do the same thing here over at CHGO, but we talk about the Blackhawks and I think the Coyotes and the Blackhawks, uh, we're going to be hand in hand this season. We're going to be paying attention to each other quite a bit, not for the right reasons, but not for a bad reason either. You know, it's, um, it, it's funny, Greg, like these are two teams that it, when you look at the Coyotes and their history. These are two teams that have had some very important meetings. They had the 2012 playoffs where the Coyotes finally won their first playoff series and they actually won it on, on the ice of the United Center. That was an important highlight of their uh, of their f- seasons and their franchise histories. This 2022-23 season will not be one of those matchups that we're looking forward to. This is going to be the low lights of the Coyotes yeah. and Blackhawks. Well, before we get into the actual, the meat and potatoes of our conversations, I have to ask the question that everybody is dying to know the answer to, and that is, uh, did Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine? What do you guys... <laughs> Greg, you've got the right... It's, Leah was it's... in Madison Square Garden watching Harry Styles. She, yeah, last week I was she's there. In the know. Nice. Yeah, um, yes. this is funny. Did he spit Harry on Styles... anybody during the show? Did anybody no, pay extra he did for not. that? No, no. I mean, well, actually, he does this thing where he takes water in his mouth and he spits up toward the the sky in a dramatic fashion but not at anyone but um last night he literally one of our actually our intern mallory was at the show last night and he said oh just popped over to venice to go spit on chris pine so he's making a joke out of it so that makes me think he's like in on the joke and i don't i don't think he actually did it this whole nonsense i don't know the the, the gist of it i don't really care but (laughs) They're, they're, they are proving the theory that there is no such thing as bad PR. Everybody's talking about Truly. it, and, and it is what it is. But Harry Styles is actually playing a bunch of shows at the United Center. That's why the Hawks yep. are starting on the road. So uh, maybe <laughs> It's we'll, all maybe Harry's we'll, fault. <laughs> maybe we'll get him into the CHGO studios and ask him face-to-face. Why You'd have did to you fly me out for that show. On that, that ex-female tennis player impersonating Chris Pine these days. But um, all right, let's get to it. We got the Coyotes. We got the Blackhawks. We don't like to talk about that 2012 series here quite as much as you do. Um, we had the, uh, of course, you guys won in the end. Our, our buddy Mike Smith had a tremendous series. And, of course, there was the whole uh, assault of Marion Hosa by Rafi Torres in that series. That oh, yeah, we, you want right. to piss off Blackhawk fans and get their blood blowing. Yeah. Just just mention Rafi Torres yeah, and, know. yeah, the, the emotion comes out. So. Uh, Marion Hosa is a god in this town for many reasons. So, but last year, uh, the Coyotes finished 57 points. Only the Montreal Canadiens had fewer. The Blackhawks had 68 points. But the Coyotes, you, you had the Blackhawks number last year. You guys went 2 1, 0 and 1 against the Hawks. Uh, you even beat the Hawks here at the United Center on Jonathan Taves' 1000th game. Like, how dare you? Um, but you know what? This year, Wait, Greg, weren't we weren't we there for that? Wasn't that the one we went to? Yeah, that was the one we were there. Yeah, it was probably our Thanks fault. A lot. But, uh, Thanks a lot. That but... was that was actually my first game in the Blackhawks press box. So that's how I remember it. Um, yeah. But we did get a sick jersey though. Yeah, we saw I the did jersey. see that. Yeah, I remember we were very jealous of all of you. You're so stuff. jelly. All those guys got to hang out in the suite. I had to cover that. uh, Yeah, I talked to Kyle Davidson for a good amount of time. In the press box. Yeah, that was not a fun fun. game to watch. But getting paid to watch it made it a little better. So, so yeah, the Coyotes had our number last year. We're hoping that's the case this year. Um, You guys, it looked like in February last year, like things were starting to come together. You guys had a four-game winning streak. You won 8 of 11 at one point. And then... 
yikes. March came and it was a lot of seven to one, six to one losses. You know what? But they you, you won the last three games of the season. So is that something you guys are going to take over and bring into the next year? Is 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 it going to be as bad as everybody is saying for the Coyotes? Leah, the answer yes. to that question, Greg, is absolutely yes. It's going to be as bad. <laughs> Here's right, the difference, having, Greg. We've done this for a year. Like we, we're we're technical coyote. issues with our stream here. Oh no. Is it me that so, I break uh, it? Uh, I, I think it's, it's running fine on mine. It's we, fine on mine, Greg. Everything looks great. I am Greg. A second. It's just Greg. Come on, Greg. <laughs> it's just Greg. It's just oh, Greg because we're fine on our end. Greg, are you? <laughs> well, we'll we'll yeah, get. Yeah, but Greg. I guess the point I was yeah, trying to make ahead. is we're used to it here. Like in, in Arizona, right. this is something that we've come accustomed to. We've gone through periods where we've gone through what you call them tank seasons or rebuild seasons. Done it before. Done it in 2014, 15. We're trying to get me, you know, we're trying to get McDavid to move through Sidney Crosby. We're trying to get in on that. Now we're trying to get in on on Connor Bedard. So it's nothing that Arizona fans aren't accustomed to. I think the big shift for Coyote, or for Chicago Blackhawk fans is you're used to trying to make the playoffs. You're trying to win a Stanley Cup. When you're trying to lose, your fan base has to go through a whole different shift. So our fan base last year. It was, it was a dichotomy. You wanted to lose. We said we wanted games to be close. We want to be the edge of our seat. We want, to, we want to keep them close, but we want to lose because we want to get in on Shane Wright. And we saw how that all played out. <laughs> Same thing holds true this year. You want to have exciting games. You want to stay close, but sadly you want to lose because if this franchise is ever going to turn it around, they need a player like Connor Bedard to do that. So yes, we're hoping they're bad again. And I, we look through the roster. I don't know where the offense is coming from. The schedule's miserable. It's yeah. going to be a battle for the basement. Blackhawks starting on the road because of Harry Styles. The Coyotes are starting on the road because they don't have team spaces yet. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be a brutal road trip to start the year, much like what the New York Islanders went through last season. And that really set them up for failure. I think this will do the same for the Coyotes. The Coyotes did not win a single game in all of October last season. Wouldn't be surprised if that happened again. And I think last year at the beginning, we thought, oh, maybe this team might not be as bad. And then, and then they proved us wrong. Um, and then, of course, won the last few games to finished 31st instead of 30 seconds so That's not a hand it to them for there. keeping it interesting at the end yeah yeah, that's what that's what Bears fans are used to. We're used to those like two meaningless wins in December to drop us down like <laughs> nine spots in the draft. It's yeah. like clockwork. Um, all right, sorry about talking over you guys there. It looks like all we good, had a little yeah. technical issue, but we're good now. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the team, we talked about it. You know, Jay is the optimist, I think is the right word uh, for this group. He thinks the Blackhawks aren't bad enough to finish with the fewest points uh, in the regular season. And he kind of read the names of the Coyotes roster um, and to the casual hockey fan, you're kind of going, you know, I haven't heard of most of these guys. But my point was when you look at the Hawks roster, you got a lot of you got more familiar names, but a lot of guys who are here to be traded, here to play really good for three quarters of the season and get traded. Whereas I believe the Coyotes have some guys that might actually be future pieces going forward, or at least guys that are looking to take that next jump who will be around past this season. Who are some of those young players that Hawks fans should be rooting for to uh, have those breakout seasons this year? Um, off the hop, I would say. Barrett Hayton is one. He was uh, the fifth overall pick, I believe, in 2018. Um, and he's kind of been – he he made a, a bit of a splash last season. He made the team when we didn't think he necessarily would be on the Coyotes roster. We thought he'd be down in Tucson. He's kind of one that a lot of people are projecting that this could possibly be his breakout season. Um, but as far as other Coyotes – prospects you know the Dylan Gunther's the Logan Cooley's we don't anticipate them to necessarily be on the roster this season um, so as far as people with the potential of breaking out I would say keep your eye on Barrett Hayton PD I don't know if you have any yeah well, the, the interesting thing here is that this is a tough spot for the Coyotes you want to grow those young players and get them developed and get them in games but you don't want to be around that losing atmosphere. So what I think they're going to do, and, and general manager Bill Armstrong talks about overbaking players, putting them back in juniors, putting them in the American League. I think they want to be competitive down in Tucson in the American League this year. 
One of the young stars that started to break out last year was a defenseman called J.J. Mosier. He's a 20-year-old defenseman, left-hand shot, high-end skill, kid can play. Um, but instead of giving him an, a, a guaranteed spot in their top six, you bring in players like Troy Stetcher, Patrick Nemeth. Um, you've got Gosses Bear. You've got, you still got Josh Brown coming in. So you've got all these veteran defensemen that are probably – bottom three on or even you know seven or eights on some teams are going to play in the top six for the Coyotes. so i don't know if a young player like jj Mosier is going to be in the lineup every night or if he's going to be down in tucson it's a tough spot you look at another kid matthias michelli is, is a name to look out for 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 blackhawk fans he's kind of like a reminds me of a, a little bit of a debrinkat he's got some skills he can get pucks through the you know through the seams gets to the net hard a smaller stature kid with some high-end skill so i think matthias michelli is a kid that's going to get in games too but overall i think this is going to be a veteran lineup that's going to be try to be driven by names like clayton keller and former blackhawk who had a career season last year nick schmaltz who was absolutely in fuego when he played for the coyotes Yes, we uh for for a while there that Schmaltz for Strom trade looked very beneficial for both teams. I mean, Dylan Strom played very well here when uh, he had a coach that actually put him in positions to succeed. Funny how that works when you book good players with uh, good other good players, they usually play better. But uh, yeah, Nick Schmaltz, uh, uh, I always love to refer to him as Chicken Fat. Good, good kid, good player. I was happy to see his uh, his success last year, but he can he can tone that down well actually no he needs to no you need to pick it up this year. yes he needs to in this you're not used to it greg it. yeah i you know used it's to weird. it it's 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 still, we're used it's to it yeah. no big deal we had so many post game shows last season where they won and we were so pissed <laughs> yeah they come back late oh or... we're look, i'm looking forward to those especially yeah. toward the end when they were winning those last few games we were so mad yeah, they had 30 <laughs> second locked up they had it locked up with a week to go in the season they had it locked up and then they go ahead and beat four. They get four wins of their last five against playoff teams. What What are they doing? It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Just wait, Greg. I can't. I feel so bad for you and Blackhawk fans. <laughs> no, have to go. I just. I can't tell you how hard it is. I feel so <laughs> sorry for you. I'm the one that's embracing the suck and the pain. I'm bringing it on. Let's go. zero and eighty two. I'm going to be the guy that's going to be throwing stuff in post game shows when they win. I'm going to be the guy that's just going to get mad every time they go past regulation. Like enough of these, a point oh, here, the, a point here. Yeah, the point, the extra no, point. I want, I want what you guys had in March where it's like over as soon as the puck drops, yeah. seven to one, six to two every night. Yeah. Bring that on. Give it to me. Inject that into my veins. I don't like the worst thing I could imagine for our shows and our chats is – like the Blackhawks win three out of the first four games of the season. Oh, no. And then just everybody's going to freak out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's a playoff team now. And then you go the wrong way and everybody's like, Oh my goodness, we're going to make the playoffs. I, I tell you the one thing that, that helps when you're trying to go through this and, and you're wanting to lose games, you want to win those big ones. You want to have ones throughout the season, Toronto Maple Leafs, Arizona Coyotes beat the Toronto Maple Leafs last year. That was a huge win. Austin Matthews returned to the desert. That's a big win for you guys. If you're playing your rivals or you're getting, you know, the Stanley Cup champions, Tampa Bay Lightning come into town, you can take those one offs. You can win those games, but you better lose when you play the Coyotes. You better lose when you play the Flyers. You better lose when you play Montreal. Like those are the games you have to lose. Win once in a while, you know, get the, get everybody fired up, get the crowd fired up, but you can't win the ones uh, against the teams that are battling for that Connor Bedard of sweepstakes. Yeah, as I've been saying all offseason long, those four Coyote games better be four of the 25 Alex Stalock starts this season. Like, get him out there, let him be some Swiss cheese, and we're good to go. That's one of our, our normal chat uh, chat participants said the other day, he wants the Blackhawks to win just six games this year, all four against the Blues and both against Detroit, and then lose the rest. And I'm, 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 I'm on board with that. Like, exactly. beat, beat, the, beat the teams you hate the most and lose to everybody else. Um yeah, so you mentioned, you know, the you, you, there's a, quite a bit of roster turnover. You lost a lot of veteran leadership, uh, or at least, you know, name-wise. Phil Kessel, who we wanted really bad here in Chicago. Uh, Alex mm -hmm. Galchenyuk, Al Anton Strauman, Antoine Rousseau, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson. Those are amongst the guys that are uh, – I keep forgetting Louis Erickson was even playing, but <laughs> so <did he>. – <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> well – uh, and then – but you did bring in some other uh, new veterans to kind of – pick up the slack Zach Cassian was acquired Nick Bustead Troy Stretcher Patrick Nemeth you mentioned them earlier on the blue line 
as you said, you know, you've got Keller, you've got Schmaltz. Who else is going to be scoring the goals for you guys? It's a problem we're going to have too outside of Patrick Kane and, you know, Lucas Reichel. Who, who's going to score those other goals? Well, there's a couple guys here to look at. And and again, it's not you these are not things you want to have happen. And and you look at some of the guys that this team has added over from the trade deadline on. You got Nick Ritchie, you got Nick Bugstead, Zach Cassian. These guys, they're not brought in because general manager Bill Armstrong goes, Hey, I really want this guy. He'll fit in our club. It's this team wants to get rid of this player for his contract. So you guys take him. And that's how this team's been built the last year and a half. But I think there's a couple guys on here to look for. Again, if you're getting your fantasy picks for and you need a coyote, there's a couple guys to look for. I again, I think Schmaltz and Keller are going to be there, there on the top of the offensive side of the puck again this year. They're going to play top line minutes, power play, so on. But Nick Bugstead, a guy that I thought was going to break out in Florida, then he gets to Minnesota, his hometown. I thought he'd break out there, and it just hasn't happened. Nick Bugstead's going to get all the ice time in the world in Arizona. He's going to play top six minutes. He's a big guy. He gets to the net hard. He can be hard F1 um, in on the four check. So he's a guy to definitely look out for. And another guy that they just re-signed, and I hope we're still on. You know, we're still not, on. We don't, it's, not, it's just the three of us, which is fine, too. It's fine. Greg's, he, Greg's just having issues today. PD and I can talk Coyotes hockey for yeah, hours. So just let, it, let us go. <laughs> and the other guy is Lawson Kraus. He's a guy that just resigned. He re-upped for a five-year deal. He's big. He's strong. He wants to be a part of the leadership group here in Arizona. I would look for him to have an, a, a breakout season, too. But it's hard. And it's just what we said. And it's what you're going to go through this year is, do you want to have breakout seasons? Do you want to be good? It's so important for both of these franchises to get a player like Connor Bedard or Fantilli to make changes long term so that you guys can hoist the cup at the United Center again. You have to be bad. And it's so hard to say, God, I hope Patrick Kane has a great year. Well, if Kane has a great year, maybe you can trade him at the trade deadline. Maybe. Like, so it's hard. You root for those good individual performances, but you still got to get the L. And that's, in, yeah, that's what we've been talking about for the last like month is a lot of like five, four losses where you see the, improvement by the guys that need to improve but you give up a bunch of gold and that's that yep. that's well, you guys did it right that, i mean i looked yeah, at your, that's the thing you, the that guys, gets you through you get rid of a good grief did you keep anybody i guess you got kane and taves but my goodness did you decimate that roster yeah greg i'll pass that one to you i don't want to talk about <laughs> yeah it. no it was uh not a popular decision to to trade alex to bring it but you know uh and i i understood it Obviously, we a lot of people wanted a lot more in the return. Uh, they they kind of wanted the the farm. We want everything, and then only getting a couple. I mean, the seventh overall pick is still pretty good, but um, I guess when you don't come with that seven year contract extension, you don't get as much on the trade market. But um, yeah, I we we need, we want to see improvement from the young players, but we also want them to. to to not win a whole lot of games it's we've definitely put ourselves in a right spot to not be good and 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 jay always worries about oh is this team too good is this team too good and i always say well don't worry because by the trade deadline you got 20 20 22 games of here are the rockford ice hogs against the nhl That's, so you can drop pr pretty quick yeah, you can even if you get guys that are overperforming, you get you get them out of town by the trade deadline, and then that last six weeks of the season, you just pile on the losses. Um, it's still so weird to be like cheering for losses, but you know it is what it is. Um, we we all know you guys actually have. We're gonna try and come up with you inspired us. Uh, you oh guys yeah, had a you guys had a hashtag contest, and your hashtag unreal it's phenomenal you set the bar very high your hashtag for the season is shit the bedard which is just i mean amazing our producer uh, sean came up with that entry and it and it sean. went all the way to the end <laughs> sean gets yeah there. Yeah. yeah it's uh it, it's it's quite the thing we are we are you, you we're made jealous us proud to be all city teammates when that i know can we since there. we're both all city can we just also use that but just change the colors out maybe i don't know <laughs> i don't know we're Absolutely. gonna have to come up with something if you haven't watched our show that's our show every day we just go to chgo and dnvr and steal their graphics change the colors and let's go <laughs> you, sound, you sound like one of the you sound like one of the media outlets right here in chicago hey um, you know, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Um, um, allegedly um all right real quick the, 
more comp, just one more thing on this year's team um, before I put you guys on the spot. The goaltending. Um, who is going to hopefully stop all the pucks uh, in, in, in Arizona this year? It's a little uh, dicey. Yeah, well, um, it's going to be Karel Vimelka. He's going to be the starter, which is, you know, interesting if you think about that, um, how far he's come. He'd never played an NHL a North American game before last season. Um, and he had some nights where he looked unstoppable. He had shutouts, um, stand on his head performances, and then he had performances that were disastrous. And there was really never a middle ground with Karel Mamaka, in my opinion. Um, and then when the Coyotes brought in Scott Wedgwood, he put a stop to their losing streak. That tandem was actually pretty solid for the Coyotes. And Scott Wedgwood played himself out of Arizona to Dallas and Carter Hutton never panned out here, obviously, and the Coyotes have brought in John Gillies in the offseason. Craig and Petey and I are still unsure if that's the goalie tandem that's going to be going forward. There's a chance we think they might either sign or trade for one more goalie before the season starts. Um, but right now, if you're looking on paper, it's Karel Vimelka and John Gillies, and then you've got Ivan Prosvitov in Tucson, where we think he should stay to continue his development, but yeah. not really a you know nationwide uh, household names there. Well, Carl they're, they're ranked. John they're ranked thirty second in goalie tandems by the Hockey <laughs> News coming into the season, so that gives you an idea. And, and John Gillies has played thirty two NHL games. Uh, Vamelka has been here less. He played one full season, so give you an idea of where their their experience lies there. If you want to be in a tank, Greg, have goaltending that's below average. And, and that is honestly the best way to do that. You see it points in the season last year, though, when the goaltending was poor and they went through stretches where it was really bad in Arizona, that the players got deflated. And it was just, they knew they had no chance. Like they're giving up four of the first seven shots and you're out you're 10 minutes into the game. Those were tough. When Vamelka was good, he was very good. He can stop 45. He, he stopped 45 in Winnipeg to shut out the Jets. He can play that good. Consistency will be a big key to his game to see if he can get wins. I don't know if they want him. I don't know if they want the wins. So same thing Chicago did. You, you blow up the goaltending. The problem with Chicago is you've got two guys that could stop the puck. Just don't know if they will. Could. Yeah. Uh, Mrazek can make me a little nervous because, I mean, you, you look, his last two contracts came from teams that brought him in with aspirations to win the Stanley Cup in the Maple Leafs and the Hurricanes. Those guys aren't – they're looking for a guy that can win. And – uh, his biggest issue, of course, has been staying on the ice. Uh, he's had health issues, uh, and and Alex Stalock has shown flashes. I mean, we saw last year. You know, we had Mark Andre Fleury who stole us a lot of points, and 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 then got traded. And then when it was Kevin Lincoln and Colin Delia, it was it was a nightmare. And and um, you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, with the young goalies, as you mentioned, you 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 described a young goalie. One night he looks like. He's a Vesna winner, and the next night he looks like he just put on skates for the first time 20 minutes before game time. So um, we're hoping. Boy, Greggy's know, having Greg. issues today. I don't know what's Back going on. The other thing to think about with these two teams is they're not going to get a chance to face each other in the basement bowl until the latter half of the season, four times, all after January 1st. Okay. First two are in Chicago. I can't wait till Chicago goes back to school and makes their first trip to the Tempe campus of ASU in the 5,000 seat building. Oh, can't I wait. can't wait. Maybe we could Can do some see, sort of uh, event for that. Can you see like, Patrick Kane that. in that building? Patrick like, Kane walking through the concourse to get to the visiting bench. I mean, that's what the visiting. Yeah, they got to walk by a concession no stand. Really? Yep. Through the can concourse you, by can a concession get some nachos stand. or something, maybe? Oh, my God. They're, I think they should set up a lane just for visiting team players as they're walking out to the bench, like a quick order lane. <laughs> It'd be trouble for Phil Kessel when he's playing for Vegas. When he's Yeah, I know. Up. Yeah, obviously, yeah. He, uh, Greg mentioned our love of Kessel here. We just It was mainly for the hot dog content. That's why we wanted to have him here in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> that thing took, a, took a mind what, of its own. I, I, I thought there's a guy that he's fun to – fun to root for he's a fun guy to have around i tell you phil kessel i think i hope he has a good season in vegas i really you do. would have been miserable be in chicago in another losing situation though yeah he would not have that been. wouldn't can, have been what he wanted no since we're we're waiting for greg can we ask you another question because of course. I, I know if you know what, craig is, what Morgan, is chicago like in january why are you thinking that you want to come come here <laughs> nobody get you on know. a plane and come here because guarantee yeah. we win that one 
Yeah. Hey, there's Greg again. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, technology is awesome until it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, Are you on, on uh, T-Mobile today here? or something? What's going on with you? I, 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 I need. I think I need to upgrade from this fourteen point four dial-up modem I've been using here. Apparently, <laughs> uh, Leah, you might be too young to get that joke, but wow. um, I, I have experienced dial-up. I actually yeah, have. Okay, those were days. I, I think. I think someone in the house picked up the phone to make a phone call and beat me <laughs> off the air. <laughs> Greg, we were just talking about how uh, the four games between our two teams are coming after January. So beautiful. And that coyotes will be hitting their stride and we would have traded everybody away. I love it. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Greg, because it's something that came up on our show yesterday and we, we mm-hmm. joked about Patrick Kane. Do you really believe he's going to finish this season as a Blackhawk? I really honestly don't know the answer to that question. I think it's 50, 50 because I honestly do believe that breaking all of Stan Makita's franchise records is important to him. And it's within reach. Uh, We've talked about a few times on the show. He basically needs four seasons at his current scoring pace to become the all-time leader in points in, in goal. You know, I really think that's important to him. Now things could change. Um, You know, does he want to, does, does he like Luke Richardson and does he think like, hey, maybe playing next year with a counter Bedard or Adam Fantelli will be a good thing. And maybe, you know, I don't know if winning another Stanley Cup is important to him. I mean, I know that's the goal for everybody, but I don't know. He doesn't need a Stanley Cup to cement his legacy. He's already a first ballot Hall of Famer, no matter what happens from here on out. So I don't know. I really think he doesn't even know the answer to that because if if he's got all the cards though because it's up to him when and where he gets traded to so i think he's doing the right thing and just saying hey let this season play out and then at the trade deadline i could pick the 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 team that has the best shot of winning a cup and go to them as opposed to getting traded before the season starts we all know every year there's a team that everybody thinks is going to be great and they're terrible and vice versa so I, I honestly don't know. I think it's 50 50. I honestly could see him finishing the season here and then the Hawks bringing him back on like a three year deal for obviously a little bit of a discount. Um, I could see that really happening. Um, or this could be just a complete nightmare and he says, get me out of here as quickly as possible. And, and then he's gone for, for, for the, the rebuild. I would hope he'd eventually ask to get traded because you can get a lot for him at the deadline. You can get another third, you can get another first round pick. Then you'd have three first round picks in this very deep draft, which again is what you need when you're rebuilding. Um, You can get a, a, you can get a lot for him at, at the deadline, especially when you can, you know, retain half of his remaining cap hit and all that fun stuff. So uh, for the business end, I hope he eventually wants to get traded. For somebody that I, that uh, will be desperate for storylines to write about the next three years, I hope he stays to break those records. See, for me, it's it's a lot like we went through that here in Arizona with a player like Shane Doan. You've got Kane and Taves. We had Shane Doan that was a legacy player that did everything for that franchise over a period of time. And and at the trade deadline every year, it's, well, Vancouver wants Shane Doan or this team wants Shane Doan, but Shane Doan wanted to remain a Coyote. And I, I, I get that same sense when you talk about Kane and Taves. It's, to me, as a hockey fan, they're Blackhawks. Like, they yeah. have always been Blackhawks, and they will always be Blackhawks. And so I, I think there is some of that. They've won their Cups. Like, hey, it's hard to rebuild, but you've won your Cups. You, you want to be a part of something special? Yeah, you're a Blackhawk. So I, I'm I'm really curious to see how those two guys propel forward. I think you're right. The trade value of Kane versus Taves is much different. I think Kane, it's his third best season of all of his entire career last year. So he's still... He's still putting the puck in the net. Um, Taves has taken a step back with some injuries. So we'll see, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, as a hockey fan, I'd love to see Kane and Taves retire as Blackhawks. And that's just from a guy on the outside looking in because that's where they belong. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to argue that. I, I don't know. I think Taves finishes the season with the Hawks just for the fact that I don't think there's much of a trade market for him, at least not now. You know, that things can change. He can have a bounce back year, and and but you're not going to get much for him uh you're gonna have to retain salary nobody's gonna be no contenders trading for jonathan taves to be their number one center you know he's gonna have to to deal with you're gonna go to wherever to be their second third line center to be the depth guy 
And I think those are things struggling. Jonathan Taves has had some issues. Uh, he's put his foot in his mouth a few times over the past year where, you know, he's had to come back the next day and retract statements because he, he's a, an emotional guy. He's a competitive guy. And, you know, his entire career is all about, about winning Stanley Cups. And now he's got to deal you know it's very easy to be a captain of a team that wins a stanley cup it's a little more difficult to be a captain of a team that is going to finish is one of the worst records in the league and he's learning to adjust that so um it, it's going to be something we've talked about a ton already and obviously as the season goes on each day that they're still here people are going to want to know where and when are they going to get traded so um, it will definitely create a lot of content for us over the next few months. But I, I, man, I wish I could predict what what happens. But I really have a feeling that that Kane wants to be a career Blackhawk. I, I, he's got a family here now. He's been here his whole career. Had he never won a Stanley Cup, then he's gone. Like, but he's got that already. He's he's got the legacy cemented. Go for the franchise records. But you know things can change. I think if he wanted to be traded right now, he would have been already. So he doesn't even know what his future is. Yep. All right, we're gonna just couple a couple more topics before my internet craps out again. But I, all right, I'm gonna pit you guys against each other. Uh, who would volunteer to be the optimist of the t- group, and who's the cynic of the group? I think I know the answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you I'm into our show. I'm definitely the optimist, and okay. PD is the pessimist really? by a that's, mile. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I wanted. That's I knew that was gonna be the answer, but I just wanted you guys to establish that for our CHGO listeners. All right, Leah, since you're the optimist, why won't the Coyotes finish with the fewest points in the NHL this year? <laughs> because it's the Coyotes' way. <laughs> they they never <laughs> do. Like, they, they're just a cursed – I swear they're a cursed franchise. Um, they, they fumble it like exactly like what happened last season, exactly like what happened in 2015. They've never won a draft lottery in – franchise history and they've never moved up in a draft ever so if they've they've only ever landed in the lottery their slotted pick or below that they've never even moved up one spot so at this point it's like i have no expectations that they're ever going to move up win a draft lottery or somehow not mess it up at the end of the season and you know last year was the rebuild the rebuild the rebuild you know wrong for right tank for right and they finished 31st so I can just see I history repeats itself and I see it happening again. To be fair, they still had a shot to get Shane Wright and, and oh, yeah. they elected on exactly. I mean they had they had two they of the did. guys. That, it's funny how that ended up working out, but the twenty twenty three draft is a different landscape than the twenty twenty two. So right. It's uh, all right. It, I'll pick. So on the opposite end of that coin, uh Steve, why will the Coyotes finish with the worst record in the league? I think we've <laughs> Honestly, already kind of this is so easy. The, these guys, and, and I, and no offense, because I, I have a lot of friends there at, at the organization and, and then the staff. This team is going to be bad. And here's the problems. They play 20 of the first 24 on the road. By the time they play a home game, their 21st game of the season, they will be 11 games out of it. it it'll be over before it starts. One, their goaltending tam, tandem doesn't have enough experience. Going to be a humongous problem. They don't have the veteran leadership like they had with Beagle, Roussel, Erickson, Ladd. Those guys are all out of the locker room this year. They don't have a guy like Phil Kessel that can score maybe once in a while. You're putting the whole season on two players, Keller and Schmaltz, and that's not enough. They're not going to be able to defend. Chikrin has has to have a, a bounce back year, and I don't know if he'll be there long enough to do that. This team is last. And I, if, you, if you've got your points bet, if they've got an over-under for points in the season, whatever they set the Coyotes bar at, take the under because it is going to be bad. And I'm saying they had 57 last year. Man, I, I don't know if they can get that high. I don't know if they can get high. It's definitely under It's a, definitely under 65. It's going to be a bad year, Greg. And, and I, unfortunately for you guys, with Kane and Taves, and you still have some players that are NHL players, I still think Chicago finishes with more points than the Arizona. Coyotes. All right, not what I wanted to hear, but I will send an email to Kyle Davidson right now to start <laughs> get trading. on that. Start trading, guys. Uh, one <laughs> of the topics, yeah, one of the topics we should hit uh, here is, is the ongoing, seeming never-ending arena dramas that have to do with the Coyotes, and now they're going to be spending a couple of years at the uh, Mullet Arena. Perfect name for a hockey arena, not a joke. Um, 
sharing the ice space with the Arizona State Sun Devils, 5,000 seat arena. Yeah, it's been we, a lot of people outside of Arizona had fun at the expense of this whole situation. But but what's the vibe heading into the season? Are our are, are fans, you know, kind of excited to, to see an NHL game in, in such a unique venue? Or is it kind of like, oh, boy, this is kind of embarrassing? I would say it's way more excitement. I think Coyotes fans have had to endure this, like, people making fun of the situation for years. So it's nothing new. And I think the idea of the fan experience inside that building is going to be so phenomenal. Like I think attendees of at this rank will be blown away by the fan experience seeing an NHL game there. So I think overall and, and like people are realistic. This is not a permanent situation. And I think, well, there'll be a lot more relief once hopefully the brand new arena in Tempe gets approved and starts getting built and if that's the case then everyone can breathe a sigh of relief and it's okay this is just a three to four year temporary situation the one part of this that is causing some concern among hockey fans here is the fact that there's only 13 rows in this building so there the tickets are being sold for price points in that you would buy any NHL arena for rows one through 13. So people who had season tickets in the upper deck or went to a handful of games a year in the upper deck, it's harder to afford tickets to games now because the the comparison to the rest of the league is it's league average, but you don't have that option to sit in the upper deck and get in the building for cheaper. And that I will say is the one thing that has been kind of a issue among fans here is just that you know it's not going to be as easy to go to games as it once was so that's kind of the one thing holding everybody back from being 100 percent bought into this but if you do get to be in the building everyone's really excited and nobody is i don't think anybody is ashamed of this situation as a coyotes fan i i've been joking when this whole thing started that it would be amazing that the coyotes go on some dream run and somehow make it to the stanley <laughs> cup final so the nhl has to host the stanley cup final in such a small building we've been and now, in that press box let me tell you <laughs> where they're running anyone I, well i mean the games would be played just for the press there would be no fans allowed <laughs> in true. the building uh, it's so true. and now that like we've have this tank for bedard uh shit the bedard a thon going on now i really want that to happen uh but i know <laughs> steve's convinced me that there's no way in hell that's happening no. but can you imagine going to johnny's ice house and watching kane and taves I, yeah, I mean, and that's what the arizona coyote fans are going to get every night they're going to go to a, uh, basically a community rink and, and no knock on the asu building it's a beautiful building for college but it is small for the NHL. And it's like going to see the best players in the world from the worst view is 13 rows back from the glass. It's going to be amazing if you can get in. And that's the hard part. And, and the, the, the other difficult part for people here in Arizona is, is what, what they've taken from North American abuse of people. Just what a joke, what a joke. What a, it's not, I don't understand how it affects anybody, but a ticket holder in Arizona. Yeah. Everybody else. Those are the only people with the right to be upset. Absolutely. If you had a season ticket holder in the second deck at Gila River Arena and you can't afford to get in now, I absolutely feel terrible for you. If you're a hockey fan in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada that just wants to complain about the size of the building, I don't understand it. What you're going to watch a game on TV, you actually probably won't watch it on TV because you'll be in bed. So I, I that's the part that, that bothers me about this whole argument is how does it affect anybody except somebody trying to buy a ticket to the building? And, and the players, that's the same sheet of ice. It's 285. That's, that's every single player. And we've every player we've talked to in the last month and a half has said, the, like, and all of them say, you know what? It's not ideal. And nobody's trying to sure. sell it that this is the situation everyone wanted. But at the end of the day, it's the same sheet of ice in that building as any other. So they're, you know, I think grateful to be playing in the NHL. <laughs> Greg, you should no, plan a road trip. CHGO should do a road, a live show from Arizona on campus. Uh, trust me, I want to do it. In January, they are uh, they are going to send us out to Denver for the opening night game. We're playing oh, at the wow. Avalanche for the uh, call for the uh, banner raising game, so uh, we're pretty sure we're heading really? out that way. Yeah, so that would be a lot of fun. So I I would I'm all for coming and visiting you guys uh, in Arizona, say mid January. 
sign Perfect me up. Time. <laughs> Perfect sign time. Sign me up. Come. I'll stay there until the end of the season if you'll have me. <laughs> you got a couch in your studio. I don't need much space. Yeah, we got plenty of space in our new studios. <laughs> yeah. I, right. I'm all for it. I, I will, I'll, I'm going to campaign for it as soon as we're done here. Um, and I think it actually – playing in that stadium might actually be more fun for the players because if you have 7,000 people – in an NHL arena, it's going to be dead. There's going to be no energy. It's going to like playing in, in a, in a cave, you get 5,000 people in that arena. It's going to be exciting. It's going to yep. be right. Everybody's going to be right on top of you. They're going to be, I think it's, it'd be a, a cool experience for those players as well. Um, yeah, we like to kid and joke and have a little fun about it. But as you mentioned, Steve, it doesn't affect us one one way or the well, other. We so. joke and joke about the mullet, like embrace oh, it, yeah. enjoy the mullet, and and make fun. But don't get vicious. And there's plenty of fans that are getting vicious over it because we For live sure. here. We got to deal with it, man. <laughs> I know when when some of the stuff came out, I talked to to Craig Morgan, your colleague over there, and you could just tell he is just so over all this. <laughs> he's so tired. All this stuff. He's he's been beaten down and uh, just like ready for whatever. <laughs> Look, there's a hater in the comments right now, Michael. Why isn't that team in Quebec? What is the NHL doing? Uh, that, that's go. our Be more that's original. Our guy. <laughs> that, that, that's our guy he's our he's our i call him our beacon of positivity he likes to uh, <laughs> michael he's yeah. a long time ox fan since the 60s he's still got his original six team wow. and you know yeah. some people you know but we, we we enjoy michael he's here all the time um, that's good and he, you know what we just want hockey fans we really do so cheer for your favorite team and have fun yeah and of yep. course, we had some fun with the arena during our draft. Well, show. Yeah. for sure. Who doesn't? Who doesn't have fun? Yeah, with that? It, it's but fine. In, the, in, in the long run, what are you going to do? Like, it's not my money. I don't care where you guys play. <laughs> yeah, it's either like honestly, it, it, Greg. It got to the point here. It was either play at the ASU building or the team had to leave Arizona. And with the new building on the horizon on Tempe Town Lake, the plans are phenomenal. This is going to be a premier facility in the league. If the Tempe City Council gets it approved. It's going to be a phenomenal building. It's going to be a destination building for the rest of the league. They just have to get it approved by the City Council. So it was either play here or leave. There, there wasn't another arena to play in. So it is not ideal. It's not the best solution. It's not the best arena to play in. It is the only one to play in. Yeah. It's uh, hopefully this this works out. Um, it, it's some stability for this franchise is what it needs Finally. most. <laughs> yes, it, it needs. It needs it. Um, all right, we're going to have one little more question before we let you guys go. Again, thank you guys. Check out everything that our, our buddies are doing over at PHNX, not only for the Coyotes, but they got some great Cardinals coverage and Diamondbacks to cover the college sports uh, as well. Um, we're proud the to be partners with yeah, them. And yeah. the Suns. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> the Suns. Sorry. I'm a big Kevin Johnson guy from way back when. So. Ooh, Kevin Johnson, the player, or Kevin Johnson, the politician. The two, different, yeah. two different guys yeah, there. Scumbag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. We uh we we love those Suns teams, the Charles Barkley era Suns. Yeah. Those those Bob that Chambers. was a fun team for six for six games. Yeah, um, but we signed one of our huge free agent acquisitions this offseason was signing Max Domi, who you started in Arizona, played his first three seasons there. I know it's been a couple of years since he's been gone, but he was a high draft pick, 12th overall, I believe. You got any little tidbits, any little thing of something, you know, we can expect fun or anything? No, yeah, for sure. Pretty... I tell you one thing about Max. Max competes. He competes incredibly hard. And if, if people know his dad, Ty Domi, who is a fighter for Toronto, Max has got that little edge in his game too. And, and if you push him the wrong way or you push his buttons, he's going to come out swinging. Like he he plays feisty. He plays hard, plays aggressive. Um, I think Hawks fans are going to like him because he's going to get to the net hard. I, I think some of his offensive upside that he had early in his career may have waned a little bit. You know, his speed diminishes with with age, but he is going to play hard and he's going to be a competitor and he he will definitely bleed Chicago um, red and black. So I think he's going to be a fun guy to watch. People are going to like him because he does have that little edge to his game. Don't push him too far. And I, his size won't matter. He's going to come out swinging. So I think, I think fans are really going to gravitate to him. I think he's a guy they're going to like, you know, you, he gets put into a corner and he's coming out swinging. Yeah. Those type of players uh, endear themselves to Chicago fans for sure. I mean, come on. I still see Andrew Shaw jerseys here in Chicago. Yeah. So similar, you know, but uh, similar, similar kind of player. And, and I think maybe even a little better uh, offensive upside to his game than that. And, and the other thing ever had part of the goal. 
Come on now. <laughs> What's that? Has he ever head headbutted a puck for a goal? <laughs> oh. No, he, he didn't do that. Yeah, he, he did get that. But but he is also a guy for you guys in the, in sports media too. He's a guy that he's going to say what he thinks. And he's going to say what is on his mind. So I, I think he's going to be great for Chicago, except in this type of season. It's going to be hard for him to, to bite his tongue and maybe not say the wrong thing once in a while. I'm okay with that. All right. Hey, before I'm we right. let them go, Greg, uh, JMT in the chat, I think he's he's one of theirs. So I, I think he is he, one of ours. He yep. should uh, answer this question for me. He said he, he needs our help. He's going to be in downtown Chicago in October for a work trip for a week. What should I check out while I'm there? That's a week. Oh, man. It, you could do a lot of damage in Chicago during the yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, so, man, there is. Uh, this, I'll we just could, say, we could spend the whole hour talking yeah. about this. Get out into the neighborhoods. Don't be in downtown. Yes, you can go to the museums if you want down there. Fine, go check the out museums. the museums. Yeah, go check out the Millennium Not if the Park. The bar is open. Okay, fine. If we're talking bars, get to the neighborhoods. Okay, go out into the Wicker Parks and Logan Squares and. North side, south side, whatever. Pilsen, all good stuff. Eat good food. Pequod's, if you need to get the deep dish, Pequod's pizza. That's uh, nice. Hot dog. I don't know, Greg. Super dog. Can they yeah, maybe on the way from O'Hare? <laughs> super so put, super dog's a little overrated in my book. Craig oh, talks my, about yeah. this one place in Chicago for hot dogs all the time. It's something and something. Gene and Jude. and yep. Jude's. That's the That's one. It, yes. That is in my neighborhood. And yes, I would also recommend Gene and Jude's. Yes. Yep. All right. My recommendation to, to our buddy here, JMT, is email Lawrence. Uh, yeah. And and he yeah. will be your tour guide. Lawrence is – he you're should be spot. my size or bigger based on the way this guy eats. But he's got that <laughs> metabolism going. Hey, and he knows Lord. all the great food spots in Chicago. Yeah. Um, yeah, but or feel free to message me on Twitter and, and let me know sure. what you're what you're into, and I'll uh, I'll I'll give you some good stuff. But good advice with Lawrence: stay out of downtown. It's all yeah. overpriced. It's all tourist and chain restaurants. There are plenty of great places to eat, mom and pop owned, that you can get a, a better meal at half the price. Correct. And get some good right. Italian food too. You got to do it. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of places for that. All right, Leah, Steve, thank you guys so much for helping me out, making me look a lot better today. And uh, bearing with me through my uh, technical issues. I woke up the hamster on the Wi-Fi wheel. It's working a little better right now. <laughs> yeah. Check them all. Up. They're both. You can follow them both on Twitter. Their their uh, handles are right there. Liam Merrow at Liam Merrow. S. Peters Hockey for Steve. Check them out over at PHNX Coyotes on the YouTube channel. I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot this season. Yep. <laughs> uh, a lot of crossover yep. episodes. Who has it worse? Like yes. it's going to be. It's going to yep. be bad, but it's going to be fun because we're going to make it fun. Damn yep. it. Can't yep. wait. All right. Pack Thank therapy. you guys. Really appreciate your time. Enjoy the uh enjoy the hot fall weather in Arizona. Hot fall. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Right on. Take care. Bye. All right. That was awesome. Thanks to those two for helping us out this week. We are way behind on ad reads because we yeah. have so much tank talk and internet's not working. But tank talk. now's a good time to remind you that Points Bet Sportsbook is counting down the days to the NFL football season. It should say counting down the minutes to kick off because it all starts today. And there's a new offer every day until the season kicks off. With the Points Bet Power Hour, I believe we've missed that already for the day. But the exciting thing for bears fans right here in chicago is if you sign up now for points bet using the promo code chgo not only are you going to get up to two risk-free bets for two thousand dollars up to two thousand dollars that is you're going to get a free chgo membership and you are going to get some amazing chicago football themed swag there it is if you place 51 dollars or more on any bet or bets during the bears Niners game this Sunday pregame or live bets. You're going to get that free CHGO membership to enjoy all of our great written content about the Bears, the Blackhawks, everybody else. You're going to get that awesome QB1 CHGO t shirt. And then you're going to get to choose from either the CHGO Midway Varsity Zip Up sweatshirt or the CHGO Vintage Crew sweatshirt. So you're going to get a sweatshirt, a t shirt, the membership. And if you're betting well, you're going to win money too. I mean, it's just too good of a deal. To That's what I like. Pass up. Yes. So, so download that points bet app. You don't need, you can sign up is free in Illinois. You don't need to go to the casino anymore and prove you're a resident. Just sign up as Jay likes to say, you can sign up in the shower, place $51 or more <laughs> on bets on that bears Niners game. And then you're going to get decked out in some of the very cool CHGO 
football gear that we have that you're going to be able to wear to some pretty cool football tailgates this year oh, too yeah. and and uh we do have some awesome uh didn't we get a really cool product that's going to help uh help got, our tailgates we just got some uh sweet uh cornhole boards or i don't, yes. I don't know what you technically want to call them but bags bags yeah. boards yeah but they're uh beautiful chgo branded they look good they have lights in the hole led lights in the hole which like yeah, i noticed that mind. Yeah, yeah, so when so, you're really uh, on the sauce late at night, you can still see the uh, see the see the holes. I guess what we should say uh, there. You know, as my buddies told me, it's for when you can need to find the holes in the dark. Uh, that's a different exactly. show. Um, yes, <laughs> you know we talked about points, but they are really good. You feel really good mentally when you win money on points bet. But if you want to feel really good physically ah. you should go visit our buddies over at athletic greens they provide you so many nutritious and health benefits when you use the ag1 program you, you make the delicious i don't know if they're shakes or smoothies i don't know what you officially call them mario is our ag1 expert so i have to take it from him but yeah he raves about the product he says it's very good i know jay's wife hope uh, uses it. She has some um, digestive problems, I suppose, that this helps out with. So AG1, it's all natural. It makes you feel great when you add it to your daily routine. And to make things even easier, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your very first purchase. And all you have to do is visit our friends over at athleticgreens.com and you will be able to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's athleticgreens.com uh, backslash CHGO Blackhawks and sign up, help us out over there and support our friends over at athleticgreens.com. We did it. We made it through the AG1. Well, yes, we did. That was, I was a little worried about that. It was like, why couldn't the internet? Where's Mario? We need yeah. Mario back. We should have pre-recorded Mario. Because that would have been he's... smart. Oh, my God. We totally could have done that. And then I just could have yeah. placed yeah. it in there. We could have done that. Well, we got one more order of business before we wrap up. Uh, it's the points bet play of the week. Oh, no. Here and, we go. Yeah. And, it, you know, I'm going to go simple. I, I tried to get all fancy and look up all these things. But mentioning the Bears. Bears. The Niners, we got to bet the Bears. It's the opening weekend. And I know – a lot of you are just like me. You're tired of this national narrative that the Bears are just going to be awful this year, that Justin Fields has no weapons, blah, blah, blah. He should, I, some dope I've never heard of said that he should demand a trade. Piss yeah. off, buddy. Like, exactly. come on. You're just, you're, you're a clown. I never heard of you when you played. I've never heard of you since you've played. I'm sorry. I know. I'm not even going to mention your name on this show. Yeah, cause I think I know his name. I've heard, heard about him earlier. It was though. literally the first time I heard it when I saw it retweeted in my feed at 20 times so the national narrative is the bears are going to be bad they may be right but they're not as bad going to be as bad as they think and i think the 49ers are ripe for an upset they've got a little controversy there their young quarterback trey lance is not happy that they brought back uh illinois jimmy native jimmy g from arlington heights right is that where he's from originally jimmy g uh is he arlington heights i forget where he's from i just he's know from him. one of those suburbs um yeah, eiu i know that yeah, Eastern Illinois. Him and Tony Romo are the are the main guys down yeah. there. So I'm going simple. I'm just going to go. I think the Bears are going to win, not only win this game, uh, they're going to win outright. I believe they are. Wow. But they're obviously going to cover that spread. They're getting seven points. Uh, they're at home. I, th I mean, the odds aren't the best there. At my, I, I don't understand how the spread can be minus 107 both ways. That I mean, is just the juice, Greg. You know, right. points bet needs the juice on either side. The VIG. Okay, so no, you gotta yeah, get sure. them their seven dollars if you're betting a hundred. So, but I mean, yeah. if it's if it's you know the same for the for both teams, shouldn't it just be a pick 'em game, not a plus seven? Well, <laughs> I mean, no, that's, that's how the, I look at it. No, that has no the, the the yeah, that's just that's literally just for the the uh, I don't know the book to get their money right. on each side. But if you're saying the Bears are gonna win, I mean. You got to go with the money line. On the money plus line, two fifty. I mean that that's that's where I would head there. If if you if you don't if you're not confident that they're going to win, I would at least bet the the plus seven. I would take those points. That's 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 a lot of points. I think the yeah. Bears' defense is is still pretty darn good. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't necessarily believe in the Niners' offense. At least week one, um, lots of. 
things can go into this. They're on the road. We got some. We new got turf. new new Bermuda grass. Bermuda friends. grass. My friends, you stand no chance on the Bermuda grass. So yeah. we're gonna make it official. The points bet play of the week is the Bears on the money line. Let's go ahead and take them to win plus two fifty. Bet yourself some money on there. Hey, sign up for points bet if you're not a user yet. Use the CHGO app. Mm-hmm. Bet fifty one dollars on that money line, and you're gonna win a whole bunch of money. And then you're gonna get some awesome gear as well. The QB one shirt, your choice of oh, one yeah, of the let's two look CHGO. At that again. Ooh, it's beautiful. That. that varsity sweatshirt is amazing. I know. I, know. I need to get one of those. I'm already a member of points bet, so I can't do it. But um, I was thinking of signing up my dog. I wonder if that would work. There you go. Maybe my dog has a social security number. Oh, right. That. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be. I tough. got a guy. I can get you to talk to me after. I got a social okay. security number guy okay. We're in Chicago. Right. You got a guy for everything. All right. That's going to wrap up this edition of CHGO Blackhawks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, thanks to Leah and Steve of PHNX. Thanks for Lawrence for manning the ship, jumping in when yeah. my internet decided not to work. I yeah, appreciate you, you, that. The, one of the parts you missed was about Patrick Kane walking through the concourse at the mullet arena because apparently opposing teams have to walk literally through the concourse where fans will be. So that's, uh, he'll, he'll walk, he'll walk right by a nacho stand. So we'll see if he gets nachos. Brent Seabrook might come out of retirement. If he hears that. Hey, that sounds wonderful. Uh, right. yeah. And thanks. Thanks to all the, uh, PHNX listeners yes. that uh, jumped in the yes. chat. Uh, all, our, all our Yotes fans. Thanks for joining yeah. in and watching and jump in the chat. If you're still in there, they might have tuned out the second Lee and Steve jumped out but thank you guys for watching hopefully you guys won't be strangers during the course of the season i know we're going to be following each other uh don't forget you can follow myself on twitter and you could follow chgo underscore blackhawks become a member at allcity.com to get all our great we're re- we're ramping up with season previews and prospect stuff for the season so if you want to get access to all that join over at allcity.com uh tomorrow is an audio only episode the gang is back together we'll be fully staffed Jay and Mario and I will be looking ahead to the free agent class of 2024 when hopefully there the Blackhawks have a counter Bedard on the roster and a boatload of cap space. So we're we're gonna we're gonna fantasize for about 45 minutes tomorrow on a Friday, fantasy Friday. Uh good stuff. Enjoy that football game tonight. Hopefully, you guys win all your bets on points bet. And uh, we will see you again live on Monday when Jay and Mario and myself are back in studio. Yeah.